bring in Marcus Hayes, the Philadelphia Inquirer columnist. What the hell happened yesterday? <laughs> They'd had enough. They've just had enough. I mean, Ben's been there for, you know, counting his quarantine more than a week. And um, he hasn't engaged with his teammates. He won't acknowledge people in the building. He talks to the, the, D, or the, I guess the G League coaches now, but he won't talk to his own coaches. I mean, he's, he's committing career suicide because, Dan, I mean, what team is going to take a chance that he's not going to do the same thing with them once he lands there? Who is he mad at? He's mad at Doc Rivers for not continuing to defend him and not promoting him as a point guard. At the end of last season, when they lost game seven, uh, one of my colleagues, David Murphy, asked Doc, do you think Ben can be the point guard of a championship team? And Doc clearly doesn't. As uh, Doc was a point guard himself and a very similar point guard to Ben Simmons. And he said, I, I don't know. I can't answer that question. He didn't say yes. That's, that's the problem. And then after Doc spoke, Joel Embiid was asked, what do you think the turning point of the game was? And he said, you know, when we didn't make the, when we didn't take the dunk with three and a half minutes left. So he's mad at them. He's embarrassed by the reaction from him not taking that dunk. And he's kind of, he, he's in a spot, I think, personally, where he thinks a fresh start changes everything, where Philadelphia is mean to him. And if he gets out of Philadelphia, everything will be better because, you know, no, we're, we're in 19, we're in 1815 and nobody knows what happened in Philadelphia, wherever he goes next. I, I don't know what he's thinking there. What happens today? Uh, nothing. I mean, he doesn't go. He didn't fly with the team. He's not with them um, for their first game tonight. And I, the, the Sixers are weird because they never practice after a, the day after the game, especially a road game. So they won't practice tomorrow. Doc Rivers said, hey, you know, we'll see what happens Thursday. Well, nothing's going to happen Thursday. Guys come in for treatment if they want it. They maybe do some film stuff. Ben won't be asked to do the film stuff because he wasn't involved in the game. So it'll be before the shoot around Friday before we know kind of where the next shoe drops because there won't be another practice. So I don't expect him to play anytime soon. I think Doc has had enough finally after a year of carrying water, for, lying for Ben Simmons, you know, and, and insulting anyone who deigned to ask, well, Ben Simmons has these deficiencies. Can you fix them this way, this way? This? Oh, you have to treasure him. He's special. I, I think he's embarrassed of how he acted last year feels betrayed. So does Joel Embiid, who carried water for him a lot. Um, so I just don't think he's going to play or get paid, more importantly, until he capitulates. And I'm not sure that that's going to happen anytime soon either. I just wonder, he he's trying to take the uh, uh, James Harden approach. He's just not as good as James Harden. Like James Harden is still <laughs> valuable, even if he's out of shape and doesn't want to play for Houston. Ben Simmons still can't shoot. He's still a liability in certain areas here. Who's going to want to trade for him? Like, do you have actual teams that would actually be interested in him? I mean, I think Cleveland would be interested in him, in him as, a, as a rebuilding centerpiece to sort of do whatever he wants and, sell, and market the team. But certainly no contender. I mean, he's putting himself in a position where no team that is viable can risk his psychology can risk his mental state, not to mention the shooting. I mean, I think he'd be a spectacular powerful, you know, uh, Dennis Rodman with a handle, Draymond Green with, you know, better, even better passing ability, maybe not as good a defender as Draymond, but he wants to be a point guard and he wants to do things his own way. And he wants to be a point guard who doesn't have to shoot and doesn't have to uh, be accountable. So, it's, it's a very, very small box, but I think it's a place like Cleveland where things are horrible and they're, they need a, they need a centerpiece is a spot. They, they just don't have anything. The Sixers would be interested in trading for to make them decent. You know, they don't have pieces in Cleveland that can play, that can break the starting line. Well, I look at Ben, you, you can't put him in a situation where it's a high pressure situation. He really has to go to a team that doesn't have any chance of winning. Therefore he doesn't get into these situations where he doesn't want to shoot a big, big free throw or make a big play, a big dunk. And I agree with you. He's not a point guard. He's, he wants to be Magic Johnson, 
Well, Magic played at a time when he didn't need to have a jumper. He he did get a, a, a jumper, or at least a set shot. Ben doesn't have that. You can be 6'9 and have a good handle, but in today's NBA, if you're going to play the point, got to be able to make free throws, and you got to at least be respectable from you know 15 to 18 feet. Or like Giannis, I mean, you have to be willing to fail. That's the issue with Ben. It's not that he can't make free throws. I mean, he hasn't lately, but it's not that he can't make free throws at a, at a clip where you don't hack a Ben in the middle of the game. I mean, that that's kind of over. And he's he's not a good shooter, but you can shoot 31% from 15 feet and out and still be a threat. I mean, your head fake works, but he won't do it. it, it like Giannis has a, is not a good shooter, is a, you know, there's a ritual that, you know, road teams go through to embarrass him on a free throw line, but he's so brave. Yeah. He's so courageous. He's such a man that he doesn't care about that because he wants to win and he wants to do what's right. He wants to do what's best. And that's the paradox with Ben. He wants to go somewhere to win, but he doesn't want to do what it takes to win. Yeah. Well, when you've been coddled and we talked about the, this the last time that, you know, why I love Giannis because he had to prove himself. He works hard every, I mean, he's still working hard and, and he's not afraid of being laughed at embarrassed because he, he just wants to be great. Ben gets laughed at and then he wants to go into a shell and then say, stop doing that to me instead of being a man, step up and go, Hey, I'm going to be great. I want to be great. I want to prove everybody wrong. And he just, Hey, Send me someplace else. All right, send you someplace else. And then what happens when things go wrong? Well, I mean, in your profession, you've been at the pinnacle of your profession for years, right? I'm near the top of my profession. I have looked ridiculous thousands of times, even, you know, after I arrived or whatever. I'm sure there are tapes of Dan Patrick out there you don't want anybody to see. But that's what it takes to become better. And that's the other thing that people don't realize about Ben Simmons. Just because he looks like an Adonis and he's ripped up and he's got a good handle, it doesn't mean he's much better than he was when he got here from LSU. Yeah. He he has not progressed as a player or a person. You know, he went to LSU under you know protest, tanked for a year, and was the number one overall pick. His plan worked, but he's the same person that I met in New York City in the ballroom at the Hilton in the pre-draft of media availability six years later. It's the same guy. He's the same spoiled, entourage, um, immature, narcissistic, smart, capable athlete that he was back then. He just hasn't, he hasn't grown. I remember when Kobe got embarrassed when he was 18 years of age, the air ball and the playoffs and, but, but you know, that was motivation. All the great players are motivated. Something. Jordan Jordan would, you know, create something to be motivated. You know, Magic mm -hmm. was motivated. He wanted to beat Bird. Bird was motivated. Like, the greats want to be motivated. I don't know what motivates Ben Simmons. Uh, money and attention. That's all he cares about. Yeah. That's all he's ever cared about. Money and attention. I mean, Kobe misses a free throw. He builds a gym in his house to practice free throws at 3 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> you know? Michael Jordan gets beat up his first year in the NBA. He goes back to UNC and he starts working out with the track team and the football team to get stronger and faster. You're not seeing Ben, you know, working out with the Australian rules football team, national team, or the rugby team to get stronger and faster and better and tougher. You know, he's going to Wimbledon with pretty, pretty ladies. You know, he's buying a house. He's going on Instagram and he's showing you on Instagram or Twitter a, a video of him making – a jump shot that he never takes in the game. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 it's insane. I mean, I, I don't care if you make a thousand of them in this gym with your trainer, take one in a game. What happens on Friday night? I just think it's, I think we're in this holding pattern for a while and he'll be fined more. And I, I think at some point the Sixers may seek relief, you know, like a breach of contract thing and try to get out of the deal, but they're not going to trade him for nothing. They're, they're just not going to let him win. Daryl Morey is a, a very difficult guy to deal with the Sixers president. And, you know, he'll stand on principle until he can't stand any longer. And uh, he's going to win this. He really, he really is. I mean, clutch sports and rich Paul and LeBron James is uh, conglomerate are going to take a big L here. And the, and the biggest loser is going to be Ben because he's going to be, if he, 
if he plays again, and that's a possibility, if he plays again, he's never going to be respected. He's going to be a pariah no matter where he's at when he's on the road. He's going, he's, he's going to be a laughing stock, and he's going to lose hundreds of millions of potential do- dollars in earnings. It's just it's suicide. I mean, he's got a small window in the next, what, month to get over himself, come back and play here and play well and get traded to a good team and refurbish his, refurbish his image, resurrect himself. But that's probably the end of the window. Great to talk to you as always. Got a lot to write about there, Marcus. Thanks for joining us again, buddy. (laughs) My pleasure. Thanks for having me. That's Marcus Hayes, Philadelphia Inquirer columnist.